Welcome to Writer Wednesdays with Sarah. I'm Sarah R. Turnquist, a multi-published, hybrid, clean historical romance author of more than 20 books. I'm also a sought-after speaker and teacher for conferences and book clubs. Today, I want to share a short teaching on deep point of view. Now, deep point of view is the concept that you will go into the character's skin and pull the reader with you. So things like you don't say he saw, you just state what he saw because we're in his point of view. So obviously what we're visualizing is from something that he is seeing. So writing in deep point of view is a current trend in novel writing and in reader wants and expectations. You probably have enjoyed reading in deep point of view, whether you realize it or not. But as you start to become aware of what deep point of view is and what it entails, the more you can make conscious choices. See, in the theater, there is this idea of a separation between the audience and the actors or the story. This is called the ascetic distance. This term actually directly refers to a psychological gap between the audience's perception as artwork and their reality so that they can see the play as artwork. The actors do strive for the onlooker to have a, what is called a willing suspension of disbelief with the story and invite the audience to relate to the characters in a very real way. But you never really feel like you're in their skin in the same way because of that aesthetic distance, that psychological break between you, your reality and the actors and the story and what's happening on the stage. In novel writing, however, the the goal is for the reader to feel as if they have become the character, to immerse themselves so deeply into the story that their point of view uh, diminishes their separation between the character and the audience. And that allows the reader to get more into that character and really experience the character's emotions, experience the, the character's thought process as they come to their decisions and their actions. Um, so one of the things that you want to make sure you do is involve the senses, because as we go through life, we smell things, see things, hear things, um, s taste things, all of these are ways that we experience the world, and it's ways that our character experiences their environment as well. The more you can involve the senses, the more your reader will feel like they are actually there. As writers, we hear all the time, show, don't tell. And that is very, very important in deep point of view. You want to, instead, let me start again, instead of telling us that your character is angry, show us that they're angry in the way that they hold their mouth, the way that their eyebrows are going, that they curl their hands into fists. Car uh, readers can read those things out of your character. You don't need to actually say every emotion that your character is feeling. Um, a reader will get the visual cues from your character just as well as the other characters in the story will. But not everything needs to be in deep point of view, I will say. It's okay to tell some things. You'll have to find a balance that suits you as a writer and your particular audience. Um, and we're throwing around this word point of view, and I need to back up just a minute and talk about point of view means the perspective, the character perspective that we are seeing the story through. Um, back when Charles Dickens was writing and some of these other greats, um, the, the idea was more of an omniscient, more of an epic feeling like uh, Lord of the Rings, more of an omniscient narrator where the, um, the reader is seeing everybody's thoughts and actions in the same way. Uh, that that really creates a distance, if you will, between the reader and the character. And that was the trend in writing years ago. However, we have come to the place where we want to see things through one character's point of view and one, one character's perspective so that we can feel with them, make decisions with them, think with them, those kinds of things. Now, you can shift point of view between scenes um, but in each scene, you need to hang into one character's point of view, and it's becoming more and more common, or actually, I should say, less and less common to see more than two or three point of view characters in a novel. 
it can happen. It's your story. It's whatever the story calls for. But it's easier for the reader to get deeper into the character if they only have to do that with one or two characters. And you see a better, more um, more developed character and a more developed character arc if you have less characters that you're asking the reader to relate to in that way. Now, if I take off my writer hat and put on the editor hat, there are some key words that I see in manuscripts, and in my own too, I'm gonna be honest here, that are evidence that you are telling or exhibiting a shallow point of view, which again distance the re distances the reader from your characters. These are sensory words, mostly things like thought, felt, saw, heard, all of those things um, are ways that we're telling the reader what's going on instead of showing them what is going on. Um, there are a couple of books that I highly, highly recommend that you read if you want to learn more about Deep Point of View. One of them is called Riveting Your Reader with a Deep Point of View. The other one is called Deep Viewpoint. And both of these resources you'll find in the description down below. Um, you can find both of them on most book platforms, ebook platforms, or get them on paperback. But I highly highly recommend both of those books, especially if you are wanting to learn more and experience more of your characters even as well. But thank you for joining me today and check out my other teachings in the playlist that is also linked below. I look forward to seeing you next week for another Writer Wednesday with Sarah.